Hello, my name is John Johnson. I live in Winchelsea Beach, which is your proper name, is a couple of miles out of Rye. I'm married, I've got um, four children, 16 grandchildren, and two dogs. <laughs> Fortunately, they don't all live at home. Most of them have moved on. Originally, I worked for the Prudential Insurance Company. I worked for a number of years, nearly 14 years, I think it was. I started off working for them in the Midlands. Then I got a transfer to Rye, as my wife's family all moved to this area in Hastings. And I quite fancied to move to the seaside anyway, and I've never regretted it since. So I've been in Winchelsea Beach now for over 40 years, which is quite a long time, and I still love it. I like chess, but I don't find many people to play with, unfortunately. And I, I've always been a keen cyclist. Well, I'm a bit of a fair weather cyclist these days, unfortunately. Of course, I take the dogs out for a walk several times a day. I love to go down by the military canal when it's not too muddy. I admire the countryside, see God's creation all around us. It's really good in the summer, of course. Right, I haven't always been a Christian, like a lot of people. My parents weren't churchgoers, and of course, so they never encouraged me to go to church, so I never did. In fact, I didn't become a Christian until I was 34, 35. First of all, my wife's brother in the Midlands started going to a Pentecostal church, and he became a Christian. And he said to his family, most of whom are in Hastings now, that they ought to go to church. So my wife's mother started going, and she said, oh, you ought to come along to this church. Well, I wasn't very keen, like, like most men, about going to church. But I did go reluctantly. Anyway, we went to this little Pentecostal church in Hastings probably six months and it didn't mean much to me for those six months. Some of the songs I couldn't really understand. Then we were singing one of the old songs, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, and suddenly the words struck me and I realised that Jesus had died for me. And the tears began to run down my face and that's when I knew that, that God was real, that Jesus was real. And, I'd got to believe in him, I'd got to serve him. And so we were both baptised, probably only about a month after that. And we continued going to this little church for probably two years. Then my wife's mother became ill and she couldn't go any longer, so we thought, well, as we live near Rye, perhaps we ought to look for a local church. And after going to several churches, we decided upon Rye Baptist Church. And um, I've now been going to Rye Baptist Church for over 30 years, probably about 33 years. And I can't imagine that I shall stop going to Rye Baptist Church. And I certainly can't imagine not being a Christian, because once you know God's love, it's not something you can forget. It's an amazing thing, really, to know that God loves you. And we've got a book all about it called The Bible, which tells us all about God and all about how he loves everyone and wants us all to know him. So I do my best, hopefully, to serve him and to live as it tells us to live in the Bible, going by Jesus' commands, loving one another, helping each other, trying to help, help those around us. As Jesus said, love your neighbour as yourself, and the neighbour is not just the person next door, it's anyone you come across who's in need, so that's what I try to do. Before I was a Christian, I was a very selfish person. I still am sometimes, that's something I have to fight against, but uh, I thought mostly of myself, I didn't think too much about other people. But after becoming a Christian, it's um, changed my whole way of thinking, my whole way of life. When you become a Christian, you, 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 as I said before, you put others first, or you try to anyway, not just yourself. And you try to share God's love with, with other people as well. In fact, it's changed my whole outlook on life. The way I think, the way, hopefully the way I act, and my attitude to other people. It's the most amazing thing to know that you're loved by God, which I'm sure I said before, but it can be bad saying again anyway, because it's true. A lot of people probably have got the wrong idea about faith and going to church. They think it's a set of rules and regulations and they don't want to join the church because there's things that they couldn't do, they like doing, and there's things that you have to do. But that's not the case at all. Being a Christian, a Christian is someone who believes in Jesus Christ and tries to live by his teaching, not someone who lives by a set of rules and regulations. So it's a shame, but people have got the wrong idea about church in a lot of cases. And somehow we've got to make people realise that church is not like that. That people are friendly, we like to see people 
coming in who are not members of the church. In fact, really, the church is the only institution that belongs, that not that belongs, that um, exists for the benefit of, it, of the non-members rather than the members. Well, that's what church should be anyway. If someone was to say to me, I'm not religious, all this church stuff doesn't apply to me, I'll say, well, I'm not religious. I don't believe in all these various rules and regulations and so on. But you don't have to be religious, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to know that there is a God who loves you and cares about you. But then also there is a God who will one day judge the earth. All our deeds will one day be judged, the good and the bad, so we need to put ourselves right with God to know that when that time comes we're going to be okay. There's a lot of issues obviously in the world today that um, make people say, well, if there's a God, why does he allow suffering? Why do people die of disease? Why do babies die? Why are terrorists and all the rest of it? But the thing is, you must remember that God gave us free will. God doesn't choose for these things to happen. These things happen through sin that came into the world through us doing the wrong thing. It's not God who causes disasters and causes people to murder someone else. It's their own badness, evilness, whatever you like to call it. You know, it's our sin that causes things to go wrong. God doesn't like it. One day Jesus will return and the world will be sorted out. It will all be put right. But it will only happen at the right time. We don't know when that time is, but as Christians, we look forward to that time when Jesus will return and sort the mess out. But till then, we have to put up with it and do our best and do as we believe that God would want us to do. Church and Rye, Rye Baptist Church, it's really, it's more like a family than a church. We all know each other very well. It's a fairly small church, but I mean, numbers don't matter. But um, yeah, we all look out for each other, hopefully, and help each other if we need help, pray for one another. It's just a big, happy family, really. People say you can be a Christian and not go to church. You can, but be, it would be very difficult because we need to encourage one another. We need to meet with other Christians. In fact, it tells us in the Bible that we should meet together and that the church is a family and we all need each other. So to try to be a Christian on your own is, is very difficult, to say the least. If you become a Christian, you should want to be with other Christians anyway. It's, it's a natural thing. Well, you do want to. It's just something that happens normally. So the church really is very important. It's the way that God works in the world through the church, through the people in the church. We all have times in our lives when we go through difficult periods. Becoming a Christian doesn't make you immune to that, unfortunately. We all have our problems and difficulties, but God does help us through it. When our children were younger, we, we often used to go camping, and we used to, go, to drive up to the Midlands to visit my parents. Anyway, this one day, we set out in our little um, camper van, us and the three children, to drive to Wolverhampton. We got stuck in awful traffic, and we got near Northampton, which is still a bit of away from Wolverhampton and it was about nine o'clock at night and I thought well it's too late now to go to my parents house you know they're, they're getting on a bit and um, it's, so what we're going to do anyway there's a boy we fostered who came from a Catholic um, children's home and there's a nun we were really friendly with and she'd moved to Northampton so my wife said well, why don't we go to the, the children's home in Northampton see we can, we can, whether we can park on their grounds and I said, don't be daft. I've never been to Northampton in my life. I don't know where it is. I've no idea how to, how to even, you know, if I could drive to Northampton. But after that, we'll be stuck. She says, oh, well, you know, we'll pray about it. God will help us. So then we drove off the motorway, down this main road, into Northampton, stopped. And right on our left was this Catholic children's home. <laughs> we found it without knowing where it was or without knowing where to go or anything. It was amazing. And I'm sure that God guided us there. Because we went and knocked on the door and introduced ourselves and the, the nun who we knew came and spoke to us and insisted we sleep in the house on proper beds and gave us a meal, which is amazing, you know. It's, uh, you can't account for that naturally, can you? It's obviously God working there, so that's just one instance. The thing is, I know a lot of people nowadays believe once you die, you're dead and that's it. But um, obviously we believe the Bible, and in the Bible it tells us that there is a life after death. That death is not the end for us. That there's a heaven and a hell. And how you be behave on this earth and what you believe makes a difference at the end. 
when we're when we're all judged by the lives we've led and by what we've done. And I would say to people, well, you know, you, you need Jesus. And I certainly can't imagine not being a Christian because once you know God's love, it's not something you can forget. It's an amazing thing, really.